Good evening, everyone. So the talk, of my, my title this evening is The Status of English in Kazakhstan. Mm -hmm. And would you agree that English has a high status nowadays in Kazakhstan? Yeah. Yes. In, in what ways, for example? Well, here we are. <laughs> for example, right here. Yes. And, and foreign uh, companies. And go to the for, foreign companies. Foreign companies, yes. Even if it is national companies, are not our national companies, we have to know English. Exactly. Exactly. Even <coughs> national companies, international employees, even, and you need to know English. So I'll talk a little bit about that. And uh, basically, it all started with uh, the Bologna process, where it was Kazakhstan signed the Bologna process, which actually affected education. And what we started having was English as a medium of instruction in Kazakhstani universities. And uh, this has several advantages. <coughs> And the advantages are many, as you can understand, because of the internationalization of not just Kazakhstan, but many countries in the world. And to internationalize, language is a key point. And what's the language that most people communicate in, in an international context? English. 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 And so that is why signing the Bologna process, which was meant to bring Kazakhstani educational institutions on a par internationally, was important. And of course, you have several advantages to internationalization and to using English as a medium of instruction. Firstly, if you think about the country, it propels Kazakhstan forward in communications, internationalization, and it helps international business and economic ties. But from a student's point of view, uh, there are a lot of benefits as well. A student who is able to study, to research in English has a lot of advantages. For example, such a student becomes a lot more mobile, is able to travel the world to educate himself or herself in different countries. And this can also give your degree a much higher status, which opens up a lot of employment opportunities and removes the barriers that language might have imposed on an international level or even locally, where you do have a lot of, as we were saying, national companies that still need a strong English component. Uh, even I work for Kazakhstan University, an international university, and in order to enter this university, a student does have to pass an IELTS score in order to be accepted. And IELTS is the International English Language Testing System, which means if you don't pass it, you can't actually enter such a university. So as you can see, there are a <coughs> lot of benefits to this. and. Um, there was a study done by Al Farabi Kazakh National University here in Kazakhstan looking at the benefits and perhaps the disadvantages of using English as a medium of instruction. So what happens here is that content courses that were formerly taught in Russian or perhaps in Kazakh now are taught in English. And it sounds like a good idea, doesn't it? <laughs> and in a sense, uh, it is, because it helps students to improve their English language. And according to research done at this university, um, the level of English skills and English abilities of most students increased and became much better. And also, students' confidence in that language increased. Next slide, please. <coughs> However, the teachers who were teaching the content in English were very qualified teachers who knew their topic, were very serious teachers, but they knew their topic either in Russian or in Kazakh. Not very much in English. 
And so suddenly they had to become content teachers and also quasi language teachers. And they didn't all have the skills. They didn't all receive really the training or the workshops to teach them how to teach in English. And even if they had, they would have had to take courses to upgrade their English skills. And for a lot of teachers, this was not possible. Another problem here was that once the students saw their teachers struggling to express themselves in English, the teachers started to seem incompetent. They weren't, they were competent. But have you ever listened to someone, if you ever heard me, for example, trying to express myself in Russian? <laughs> you would think that maybe I didn't know very much, that I wasn't overly intelligent. Because when you don't have the language skills, your intelligence cannot shine through. And unfortunately, it's a misperception, but that's what happened here. So, that was one issue. But the major issue was that the lack of competence in English means that the teachers were not able to communicate the content and the information adequately. And so these students whose English proficiency rose, which is wonderful, however, the understanding of the content actually decreased because they couldn't quite understand what the teachers were saying and the <coughs> teachers didn't really have the vocabulary to explain the content. Can we go to the next slide? And so when assessments came, here was the question. How do you actually assess students in a classroom that has English as a medium of instruction? Do you assess their understanding of the content? In which there's a disadvantage now because they haven't fully understood it? Or do you assess their English skills? Which, yes, their English skills have improved, but not enough because the teachers don't have those skills to teach the students. And how do you write tests and understand questions in tests? For example, how was Locke's political philosophy revolutionary? Here's an exam question written in English that's not quite fluent. People became strong instead of people gained political power. It came to democratic elections. It helped create democratic elections. You can see how the meaning here changes. And it denied the kings. The kings no longer had power. So here you have several problems with this here. Can we go to the next slide, please? However, there is a solution, an old-fashioned solution, which looks at English for specific purposes alongside the content courses. So you have your content courses in Kazakh, Russian, and then the support provided in English in a separate classroom where the, the teacher here teaches the English skills necessary to support those specific subjects, thus provide, providing two alternate courses that can better support the student's knowledge. And that, in a nutshell, could be a way forward to offset the disadvantages of English as a medium of instruction. So that's all I have to say for now. And I'd like to open the floor uh, for questions, if you have any questions about this idea or this subject or any concerns. Um, I have a question right, uh, related to uh, perhaps uh, the famous program, Bolshev program. We have a lot of uh, <coughs> people who uh, studied abroad and uh, uh, they did their master's PhDs and came back to Kazakhstan. Mm -hmm. uh, would, would it be better if we have this solution, like bringing our own like uh, uh, young sirs or young professionals back to Kazakhstan and uh, ask them to teach in English in this, those subjects uh, and perhaps make the, the better conditions for them, like uh, we do in Nazarbayev University, perhaps we can spread it around with Kazakhstan. What do you think about it? Um, about this? That would be helpful 
in a sense because these uh, students do have the English knowledge and the English skills and have studied in English in that subject. That would be a great idea. And yet, what do you do with all the teachers that are currently in place and who don't have the language skills? You can't <coughs> quite push them out. You have to introduce them slowly. As the older teachers retire, then you can bring in a newer teacher who has the English skills. So yes, it's a good idea if done slowly and with care. Uh, have you got any um, uh, real examples of implementing English for specific purposes as an author, as a solution, like maybe in some of the schools? And I've seen this happen, maybe not in this country, because I'm still <coughs> quite new here, but I've seen it happen, for example, in Qatar where they had Qatar University, where you had the students actually studying their subject in Arabic, and yet there was a, a, a department of that university that was called the English unit. And there were different courses streamed into the different departments where you would teach, for example, English for engineering or English for business students. Mm -hmm. And so you supported their English, and yet the focus was English, less than the content. May I ask? Yeah, may I ask? Uh, okay, uh, I have a question. Uh, uh, when the uh, subjects in the universities are being uh, teached in English, basically, uh, and I, I, at least in my opinion, the people who uh, actually finish those courses can only use this knowledge in a certain context. In the international companies, maybe in the embassies and such, but not exactly on the internal stage of the Kazakhstani uh, workforce or something like this. What kind of benefits do you think uh, teaching uh, subjects in English would give to the Kazakhstani internal uh, Market. stage, marketing or whatever it is? Basically, uh, this, would, <coughs> this would be geared towards their professional fields. Mm -hmm. So it wouldn't so much be geared to general English that they could speak with people that they meet who are English speaking. But uh, can I, uh, yeah, sorry, sorry. Can I add a bit? Because uh, I know uh, people who are studying uh, on by the Bolosha program, uh -huh. and uh, they were obviously studying them in, in English, and uh, they are saying that they can't really express themselves professionally in their native language because they've been taught in English those terms, and they cannot really uh, translate those terms uh, when it comes to uh, native speakers. And they will, uh, if they're going to come back to Kazakhstan, they're going to deal mostly with native speakers who don't speak English. Uh, so there is this issue as well. So yeah, this is an issue, and, and that's why I'm, I'm focusing on the status of English within Kazakhstan. Mm -hmm. So within the country here, the students would have the benefit of English instruction mm -hmm. and content subject instruction in Russian or Kazakhstan or, or Kazakh. So they would be able to communicate in both mm -hmm. in that sense. But once you send a student overseas on a Bolshevik Bolshe pro uh, program, it's a different, because what you're getting there is English as a medium of instruction because yeah. they've gone to England or to the States. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, do you what do you think about about IELTS uh, preparation for uh, specific purposes? For if if such a thing existed, I, it would be. I suppose it would be a good idea in one way, but IELTS is also teaching someone how to take a test, not so much how to function, and so. Yes and no. Yeah, I think we've run out of time, so I'd like to thank you for all your, your questions and your attention. Thank you very much.